We're back and welcome to Cool Illustrator. This time we're going to look at the Rotate tool and some of the things we can do with it. Right, now this. This is Illustrator CS3 but um, everything we're going to look at now is available on many earlier versions, okay? Let's start. We'll draw a uh, circle or an ellipse. It doesn't have to be a circle. Okay, that's cool. Now if we select our top node we can drag it up. We're just making a little bit of a shape here. Just playing around. Just watch what we're doing. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, no, straighten this up here. You can see I'm sort of making like a teardrop. It's a real simple teardrop. Start by drawing a circle and then just play with one, one node. Okay, now drag it down here and we'll duplicate it. I'm working on a PC so I just hold down the ALT key while I do that. Okay, right. What we want to do now is we want to reflect it. We could rotate it, but rotation doesn't always work. So we're going to reflect this on two different axes. Okay, yep, that's cool. It's much the same. In this case it's the same as rotation, but I prefer to reflect these things because some things don't rotate so well. Align them up. That's cool, not a problem. Now, shrink them down. I've just selected them both. I haven't done anything to them. They're still two separate objects. Drag this one down. I hold shift when I drag it to make sure that they're still in alignment. Select the pair of them. And in my Pathfinder, I will turn them into one. Okay, they're now just one object. Up here, in our Transform, you can't quite see it. Transform, Rotate. Here is the key. Uh, this tool is very powerful and it's very simple to use. Rotate. I'll just enter in an angle, click on the preview and it's going to show me exactly how much that is. That's a bit far, so I'll try something else. 20. Alright. Okay, before we go on, um, just a note here that whatever angle you choose has to divide into 360. Okay, it's no good going and choosing 19 or 37. It's got to actually divide equally into 360 so that you end up back at exactly where you start again. Okay, if I press the copy, we get a copy just like that. And if I do Control D, because I'm on a PC, I think it's Command D on a Mac, you can see what we've done. We've made ourselves quite an interesting shape. The next thing to do is to select them all, and down in our Pathfinder, we'll add them together again. This makes them into a, a compound shape. Um, it's all just one piece. If I press expand, it is now just a single shape. That's that's what we want. Right, back to the ellipse tool, and we'll draw this time a circle. I'll hold down shift and make it a perfect circle. Okay, I want to be able to see through this, so we'll go to our color palette. I'll um, turn off the fill, so there we are. I can see through it. Select them all down to a line and we'll align them. Now I'll duplicate that circle and I'll make it a bit smaller. I'm holding down shift so that it remains a circle. Select them all again, align them again. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, select my larger circle and then my new shape back to Pathfinder and this time I'll minus front. And if I press expand, you can see what I've done. Are you starting to get the picture? Look at that. Right. Bring down our colours now. Yellow. Yep. Orange, maybe. Yep. No, I think we can probably do better than that, actually. Get rid of the outline. Get rid of that outline. And no, I think we're going to... We'll, we'll use a gradient here. I'll go and find the palette. There it is. Right. Just drag a color off here onto the gradient, and that gives us our colors. So yellow like that. Got a gradient from white to yellow. Make it radial. Just see what happens when we drag the center. Yep, that's about right. Just bear with me here. This is generally experimentation. You don't always know exactly what you're doing when you do this. You just 
keep going until you've got what you want. Bit of yellow, spread it out. Yeah, I want a bit of white in the middle, so we'll drag this one out. How's that? What does that look like? Yeah, that's about right. Perfect. Let's just apply exactly the same fill to the middle. How's that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, we can group them. We can make it smaller, move it out of the way, because we're going to do something else now. That's one way of using the Rotate tool. Let's look at something else. We get our ellipse tool again, and this time we'll make a long, thin oval. Here we go. Notice it's brought the same fill in as before. We don't necessarily need that fill, so we'll just, just clear, clear it away, and we'll give it a black outline so that we can see what we're doing. Right, once again, with our oval, or you can call it whatever you like, surfboard, go up to our rotate tool, and 30, yep, that's about right, 20, sorry, and control D again. Wow, look at that, see? Seconds, and we've got a really strange shape. Select them all, but no, not the sun. Add them all together and expand it. There's another shape. I'm sure you can see some possibilities with that. Once again, a circle. Hold down Shift. I need to size this one a little more closely this time. So get it right there. Hold down Shift. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Okay, we'll duplicate it. Oops, try again. Make it a bit smaller, the internal one. Select them all and now we can align them in our line palette. Okay, yep, it's about right. So what I want to do now is yeah, we'll make that one a bit smaller. Align them. Right. Now the shape that I'm looking for requires me to take the larger of the circles and the strange shape and I'll intersect them this one here and expand and then we will add it to the interior circle click expand and I'm sure you can see where we're going look at that couple more circles align them and now we just need to make our shape. We'll select the two outside, that one and that one, and this time we'll go minus front. Now the circle is on the front because it was drawn afterwards. Expand it, and if I add some color you'll see what I've done. Oops, nope, that's the outline. Go back to the fill, add some color, and there we go. You see? We'll add it to this next one here. Use the add. It's taken on the uh, color of the last object. That's it. There's our shape. We can stop that now if we like. Everything I've showed you so far has been available from Illustrator Neanderthal. Um, what we're going to look at now is something that's actually available um, in the CS versions of Illustrator. It's been around for a little bit. This is a cool tool. Okay, look at this. 3D bevel and emboss, or bevel, sorry. Extrude and bevel. We'll stick it here somewhere where I can, we can see what's behind. I've only got a small screen to work with. Turn on the options and you can see what we're doing here, okay? I'll turn on the preview and then just move this box around and look at that. Okay, now there's a whole lot of settings in this tool you can play with. Um, I'll just have a quick little look here. We'll, we'll play with a bit of perspective. Okay, down here we've got our lighting, lighting direction. I can play with the intensity, all sorts of things. Um, this is the depth of the extrude. We can take it down a bit or make it really stupidly huge. Find a compromise. Here we go. Um, yeah, really this is something you have to play with, but uh, we'll just do that for now. And you can see, look at that. This didn't take very long, and yet it's a pretty cool sort of a setup, alright? 
just to move our sun down onto the front for some strange reason, don't worry about that. There we go. Enjoy. If you want to see more tutorials on graphics programs, visit electricartist.com. If you want to learn more about computer graphics and graphic design, visit learncomputergraphics.com.